Good. So now uh, we're going to install the wiring loom. I'll see you in the barn. Now that we have the tractor inside and fully painted, we can actually start putting it all back together. And the first thing we need to do now is to reinstall all the electrical cabling. And there are different ways to go about installing a new wiring loom. You can get a complete wiring loom, like the one I have right here, I mean pre-assembled, pre-cut, pre-terminated. And you can install it on your tractor. The one that I have right here is actually for the front part of the tractor, but I'll come back to this. Or you can decide to wire it all up yourself, which might actually be a little bit more pretty and better. But it's entirely up to you. I opted for the front wiring loom um, pre-made because for this price, I can't even put the connectors up myself. I cannot even buy the wires for it. So that's what I went for this. Um, but then again, you will see that this wiring loom is pretty accurate, but not 100%. You still have to do some modifications. So you can decide to do your own cabling if you want to, and that's not all that difficult. All you need to do is to get your hands on a circuit diagram. But I will be showing you in this video a couple of circuit diagrams for the different circuits, the starter circuit, the charge circuit, all the dials and the gauges, and how all that fits together. So just in case you want to make your own wiring, you will be able to do so. And in a previous video, we have reassembled the dashboard. We installed all the gauges and the dials, the warning lights and the switches. So now it's time to put the dashboard back onto the tractor. And that's a little bit of a problem because it is not easy to access it. And because of the cabling loom we have, or the wiring loom, um, we might have to get in the back quite often onto the dashboard. So we're going to remove, first of all, the steering wheel. And then we'll also shift aside a little bit the steering column so we can actually install the dashboard or hold the dashboard in place fairly easy while we're doing the actual installation of the cabling. So the first thing we're going to do is to take the steering wheel off. And for that, I'm using a pulley uh, puller because otherwise it's, it is very tough to get these off. And I don't want to break it. Or maybe uh, I might get a new one. So that should come off very easily. There we go. And now we have the space uh, to fit the dashboard. So we did remove the steering wheel, but even with the steering wheel removed, there was enough play here to actually install the dashboard because you have to get to the back and so on. So I didn't want to scratch it. So actually I loosened up the steering column. And removing the steering column isn't very hard. There's only four bolts that hold the steering column in place. And then you can actually move it back a bit. That's how it sits original. And this space is not enough. So I just undid it and I'm just gonna let it lean backwards. So now I have more than enough space to put the actual dashboard. And here is that new dashboard, so we're going to try to see if we can fit it. Uh, I'm not going to let it sit on there too long. I'm, I just want to see if we now can actually get it into place. And that seems like this is going to fit just fine. And I will be able to work underneath because that's important that we can get our hands underneath sometimes to run the cables. If you don't do this, this uh, steering column is too close and you can't hardly put the dashboard up. So let me take it out again because we still have to cable it out on the inside. You can find different wire looms for the David Brown tractor. There is a wiring loom for the front of the engine connecting the alternator, the starter motor, the sensors for water and oil pressure, the horn, all that stuff and also the front lights are typically inclusive in it and that's the front wiring loom you get and I bought that one combined with the dashboard wiring loom and here you can actually see the front wiring loom you can see all the connectors that are going to the alternator then you have this long cable here going actually to the lights inside the bonnet which of course is not on it yet and then this white connector is going back all the way to the dashboard so that's the front wiring loom. Now this wiring loom should fit properly, 
but I already noticed that some wires are too long and others are a bit too short, specifically for the oil pressure switch. So you might have to do some adjustments. But then again, it's a good start. There's one more thing I wanted to mention about this is that typically you have underneath your air intake, there's a tube there. And in that tube, you can actually run your wires through it, which protects the wires very well. Now, with a pre-made cable, there is no way to do that. So if you really like to do it on your own and do all your own cabling, you can make it look a lot better and far more original by running these cables through all these tubes, protection tubes. Now we'll do this for the back side of the tractor. The second part of the wiring loom is the wiring loom for the dashboard. This is this guy right here. A lot of connectors. Now don't be impressed by it because it is very simple and straightforward and there's even a circuit di diagram with it. So I'm going to show you what that circuit diagram is. And here you have that connector. So that connector actually connects to this other white. It mates with this white connector from the front wiring loom. So whenever you need to take off your dashboard in the future, you can just disconnect it to pieces. Now for the back side, for the back wiring loom, for the blinkers and for the taillights, um, I have no wiring loom, so I will have to run that up myself. So we bought a couple of those connectors. You can get those very cheap because I also want to make that detachable. And you'll see that when we start building the rear wiring on this tractor. Okay, so now let's have a closer look maybe on the circuit diagram or the diagram that actually comes with this wiring loom. And this is the actual circuit diagram that comes with the wiring loom. And this is the white connector I showed you before. And that's connecting to the front part of the tractor. And as you can see, the long wire is actually where the main lights go on. The big black block here is where it goes to your alternator. And in fact, you see the different color codes and you can find the cables back the colors on the cables. So that's easy. This little one right here is your old pressure sensor. That one is actually in the wrong place, to be honest, because on my tractor that's on the other side, I can't run it, so I need to extend that one. This connects to the temperature sensor close to the thermostat housing, pretty easy. And then you have actually here a mains power feed, which is connected to the uh, pickup point on the solenoid coming from the battery. And then this little cable here, the white one, is actually the starter uh, for your tractor. So it's to start uh, the solenoid uh, whenever you turn the contact key. And that's the front side. So you can see this is a pretty simple circuit. And then it connects onwards towards the bigger uh, wiring loom, which is part of the uh, dashboard itself. So the lower part, the second part of it is all this cabling right here. All this actually fits inside the dashboard, except with some leads spinning out to the fuel tank where the sender unit is. We'll replace that one. But then you have some other leads spinning off to the horn. And you can see where all these uh, cables connectors are going to the fuel gauges, the, the lights for the fuel gauges. Pretty good. The only thing that it doesn't have uh, this wiring loom is the blinker system, nor does it have the cabling going back to the rear lights or actually the vacuum warning on my hydraulic system. So I need to add those. There is no detail on the fuse box, but that's not too hard. You can all measure that out. So now let me show you um, how I'm going to create my own extension on this towards the back side with one of these white connector blocks. I'm going to show you one and you can buy those easily in the stores. And then uh, I guess uh, we'll start to hook it up. So no matter which way you want to go, if you buy a pre-assembled wiring harness, then you use your schematic for that. If you're going to install it all yourself, then you're going to need a lot of wires and different sizes of wires and different colors. You will also need a lot of connectors and it's always good to buy an assortment of connectors. And then of course you're going to need your most vital tool, which is your ohm meter, because you will have to measure things out, believe me. Even on this pre-wired wiring loom, I had to check a few things out to find out exactly where which cable was terminated. Although the diagram is not too bad, it is not really an electronics diagram, it's more like a cabling diagram, and I do prefer more an electronics diagram, but that's what it is. I'm not going to make a commercial for any specific brand of connectors, but get the right connectors at the right sizes. Get connectors that are insulated like this one. Get connectors that are maybe not insulated like that one. Different sizes, um, connecting tubes, 
just get that because it's really going to help you. Typically, it's not very cheap, but it's great to have. And if you do buy it, then always buy a good set of pliers that come with it for the different gauges of the wire. It also is a wire stripper. I don't like the stripper too much. I'd rather use another plier, but it's great to clamp in these connectors onto the cables. So um, I think this is a good thing to have. I used to have a professor who told me, Steve, you should always measure. Knowledge is measurement, and he's right. So even for this job here, although it's very simple, you have a circuit diagram, you will have to measure the voltages and you will have to measure continuity. So make sure that you do have an ohm meter. It's so handy, it doesn't have to be an expensive one, so you can check continuity, like so because that makes it so easy to trace all the wires and you can measure the voltages and so on. So we'll be using that intensively when we are installing things onto this tractor because the switches that I have on the dashboard have many contacts and I don't know what contact connects to what. But then again, we don't worry about it because we'll measure it out and check it out. And if you're going to make your own wiring loom, make sure you have these connectors so you can disconnect the dashboard from the front wiring and the rear wiring loom. And these are automotive connectors, very cheap things, not expensive at all. And you have all the spades that go in with the males and the females and you can stick them inside these connectors, just like we have on the pre-made cable. And that makes it very handy. I think I paid something like two euros for this, so this is nothing. And I have two times a connector with six contacts. You have them with eight contacts and you even have them with 12 contacts if I'm not mistaken. But all right, this is not for now, this is for later. And this is the inside of the dashboard and as you can see, nothing has connected yet. But I want to give you one example on where you're gonna need an ohm meter to determine how you should connect the switches. This switch right here is your contact switch. So you turn the key one position, you have contact, the lights go on, you turn the key further and there's some resistance on it and then the engine starts, right? So it's like a two position uh, switch. So now how do you know which connector is what? So on this lovely circuit diagram, we have like three connectors. We've got a starter trip, we've got a power in, and we got power to the fuse box, right? Three leads. Now, which one goes where on the key switch? This is the key switch cabling, actually. Now, if we look on the key switch, we'll see something different. So here is the key switch. Now, who is what? So I know I have a power input. I know I have an output going to my fuse box to light up and to feed all my gauges and my dials. And also I have another contact going back to my starter, the trip for my starter. So what is what? So now you need to find out what that is. And therefore I'm going to use an ohmmeter, connect it up and figure it out. All right. So I have my ohmmeter set up and I have continuity. So I'm going to try and find out where the points are. Right now I'm going to turn the contact to off. All right, contact is off, so I should have no connection anywhere. That's good, no connection anywhere. Let me turn it to the contact position. Now it's turned to contact. Oh, got continuity between those two. Not to that one or that one. Now I'm going to try to turn it to the start position. But then I now need to hold it because there's some spring on it. And it's that one is still continuity, so that must be my contact. And now I have continuity on the bottom here, so this must be my start trip. If I let go, contact is gone, but I still have it here. So now I know. This is my power input. This is my contact, and that's my starter trip. And that's the kind of work you have to do to identify how these switches operate. So we've done the contact switch, but for the same reason, I will have to do the dial or the switch for my lights and also my blinker switch. So there's a lot of contacts on those. It's not very hard, but you just need to go out and measure it and write it down because that's not on your wiring diagram. 
we're going to install uh, the front wiring loom on the tractor and I'm not going to feed it through the tube because I can't because of the connectors I explained before. So I'm going to start with my alternator and this is the big plug. You can't miss that one. That fits right here on the side on the alternator. And let me just um, leave that whole cable over here for now. And the white plug will go to the dashboard, obviously. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can plug this guy in and then we should be good. All right. So it's keyed, so you can't do this wrong. And I need to get it a little bit further through. All right. Oh, man. So that goes on right here. All right, that's connected. Now I can also connect the sensing lead for my uh, water temperature, which is actually this one right here and I checked it on the diagram so we can run it through the system and you can see this is pretty long right this cable I'm just going to stick it on there this is where the sensor is long cable I'm not going to cut anything for the moment now this one is nothing really special this is going to the lights on the bonnet uh, once we have the bonnet on so I'm going to place that aside uh, this one, that's an easy one. That goes to the starter motor and I'll show you that in a minute. And the white one that we have on this one is actually the starter trip. So that's the solenoid activation as soon as you turn the contact key past that little tension point to overcome that force and then the engine will start. And then I have this one right here. Now I have it already extended as you can see because this is my uh, oil pressure switch which is not on this side, it's on the other side. And to be honest, the cable wasn't long enough, so you can see that even a pre-made uh, wiring harness is going to take some corrections. So I'm just going to run that all the way through and then get that sorted out. Okay, so that's going to go all the way to the other side. I want to route this slightly nicely and clean, and then we'll see. And now I'm going to route this white connector straight underneath the gas tank and try to pick it up on the other side where it's going to connect to the dashboard, right? So let me move that out there. There we go. So now I have that coming out on the other side and that's about all I'm going to need here. Um, I might have to place it in the right spots. I don't think the way it's been done or routed now is good enough. So um, once you got the cables more or less where you want them to have, I'm going to use some tie wraps to put it all together and hold it together. Now normally you can install it in the tube as I said before, but since everything is pre-terminated, uh, I cannot. So. All right, so I think this looks all right. I might actually tie one more over here. So the big red cable is the cable coming from the battery going to the top of the solenoid. And the solenoid is like a big relay. As soon as we provide power to it on this side here by turning the starter switch, it's going to connect the plus 12 volts straight to the bottom part and then straight into the starter motor and on the other side it goes back to ground so then the starter motor starts to run besides the effect of the bandix the coil here moving out the bandix onto the um, flywheel but okay um, so we need to connect that and the wiring loom that we have here it is is having a big lug here which is actually also going back to the fuse box and there's a couple of brown wires on it. There's one brown wire coming from my alternator, which is the feet or the charts of my battery. The other two are actually going back to the uh, switch unit and the fuse box to provide plus 12 volts towards that uh, fuse box. So let me put this together. And as you can see already, the cable that we have here is a little bit too big, right? But that's okay, we will tie wrap it. Now, if you were to do this yourself and you run your own cabling, 
then you certainly wouldn't have that issue. You would make it far more tight. Now, I'm not going to bother cutting it all short. Um, that's not necessary. Uh, but if you do it yourself, then you can do that. All right, so let's hook it up and tie it down as much as we can. There's two nuts on that, so you need to hold one. Otherwise, if you don't, you're going to destroy the solenoid inside. I've seen that being done before. And this should be tight. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, so this is real tight. And now this white one, that's my starter trip. So this one is the one that's going to trip the solenoid as soon as I turn my contact key through. So I need to stick it to the side on the solenoid to activate it. There we go. And that's it. There is nothing more to it. Now, obviously, I don't like it hanging it like this, so we will tie wrap that down just like all the rest. So we might want to do it like so because we still have our RPM uh, cable coming out of there. So I don't want to screw that up. So let's move it as much as we can to the back. So with everything locked down, I'm just going to cut the tie wraps. And I think this looks quite all right. I still have a cable hanging here. This is the one for the light, so I'm gonna keep it rolled up. And then as soon as the bonnet goes on, we connect it to the, uh, the lights of the bonnet. And that's about it. Everything is now connected and we should be able to move ahead. Now on the other side to connect the uh, oil pressure sensor. So the oil pressure sensor is right on top of the oil filter. And I already ran a white cable all the way up to that point. So now we're just going to cut the wire and put a connector up. So now I can put the little spade up. Get it all the way in there. And then use the right pliers for this size of a cable. Or spade, I should say. So I'm going to go for the first one and squeeze it as hard as you can. There we go. And that should be it. And now I can install it onto the sensor. Okay, so we've got the front wiring loom installed. And now we also know that this big white cable here is coming from the solenoid to get the solenoid working on the starter motor. We also know that the big brown one is actually coming from the battery. So if I connect a little test here, test clip between the white one and the brown one, the starter motor should turn. So let's try and see what happens. There we go. So this is how you can check things in a very simple way. So we are done with the front wiring loom. That wasn't very hard. So now we're going to install the wiring loom inside the dashboard. So I've placed the dashboard pretty close to the tractor so we can actually uh, try things out when we're connecting the dashboard to the plug here on the side. I also taped up the, the circuit diagram because I'm going to need this to do all the connections on the dashboard. Now the wiring loom that we've got here is not having all the cabling that we require on the David Brown. It has most of it, but it doesn't have the lights or the blinkers uh, for the rear side. So we'll have to do that extra. So there's a few things we'll need to modify. Also, we may have to modify a few of those connectors. And in fact, I already have done one, which is this one, which is a bigger spade. It depends all a bit on what kind of switches you have mounted in your dashboard, because some of those are aftermarket switches and they may have different connector types. You'll see it actually also on the warning lights. I have actually screws uh, and I have actually spades on the cable. So I will have to cut off the spades and then we will put in uh, the wire in these screws and maybe we solder it a little bit up front. 
So we're going to do this uh, very uh, slowly uh, because there's a lot of cabling to be done. I'm not going to tie down the wiring loom uh, from the start inside the dashboard because I don't know how far I need to pull it through and I don't even know if this wiring loom is actually 100% correct either. But we'll figure that out while we're installing it. So the first circuit we're going to wire in is actually the power coming from the battery through the pickup point on the starter motor through this plug there and then onto the um, contact switch and the contact switch has two positions it is off contact and contact will be used to feed power to the fuse box and to power all the gauges and the warning lights and then if we turn the contact key one more step then we're going to start it and then we need to provide power back to the starter motor to the tip of the solenoid so that's going to be the first circuit the second circuit we're going to do is then wiring in all the gauges and the warning lights and then after that we'll uh, start installing the light cabling so everything for the lights the rear lights but for the rear lights actually i have to create new cabling i have to create a new connector so that's going to be um, a little bit of work we'll also install then new sensors in fact only one which is the float in the gas tank and we'll have to pump out some of the diesel because there's too much diesel in the tank before i can remove the float but you'll see me installing a new float and every so often I will give you a close-up on the diagram here that we have on the site. Um, but then again, it uh, depends on what type of wire loom you have. Just follow the color code. I'm going to um, allow the switches, the lights, uh, the light switches and the blinkers to work, even though the contact may not be on. Um, so it, that's a choice you make. Um, the interesting part on this tractor is there's no, almost no relays. I haven't seen any relay, to be very honest, in this tractor, nor on the circuit diagrams of the ori original David Brown. So everything is really hot switched, as we call it. Anyway, with any further ado, let's start with the first circuit. So the first thing we're going to connect, as I said, was the key switch, which is this one right there. So if you look on the wiring loom, you can see where it comes out. And then you have a couple of colors. White is the starter trip, so that's the white wire going actually to the start of the solenoid to crank the engine up. The second color cable is actually a brown one, and this is power in. This is power actually coming from the picket point on your solenoid, which is coming from the battery. And then the green one, uh, which is the top one, well, that's the one that's gonna go back to the fuse box. And that's gonna feed actually power to the fuse box only when the contact is on and the other side of the fuse box will then provide power to all the gauges and the warning lights. So let's start with this cable right here. And as you might remember, this is the key switch and we already have it measured out that this is the power input, this is the contact, so in position number one. And if you turn the key a bit further across, across the resistance that you will feel, then you provide power to the bottom side, which is actually going to the starter. So this is pretty easy to install now. So we're going to install, first of all, the big ground, brown cable, and that's going to go right there on the top. This is the input power, and we've seen that on the circuit diagram. We'll then install the green cable, which is now the contact. And then finally, we're going to install the white cable, which is this one, which is the trip or the tip, which is going back to the solenoid to start the uh, motor. Now, uh, I had to cut off the original spade because it was a small spade and I need a big spade for this connector. So let me put this up and then we should be good to go. Right now, see, this is a bit loose. That's not good. So what I typically do, I'm going to bend in a little bit the contacts or, or the blade itself so it provides a little bit more tension. So let us do that. So that's not very hard to do. Uh, we can just... Uh, do so. All right, that's done. Now this should now be a lot better. And it is. There we go. And that's it. That's the cabling already done for the contact switch. So I connected the dashboard wiring loom to the wiring loom of the front of the tractor. So now we should be able to start up uh, the starter motor uh, because we have actually the switch connected. So let's see if that works. Well, 
nothing happens. And the reason for that is very simple. This wiring harness is what we call a safety wire harness. There's a switch on the side on the clutch pedal that you need to depress before you can actually start the motor. And these are the two connectors. So what I need to do is I need to make a short between those two before actually it can start. Or I can connect it to the switch, but it's on the other side of the tractor. So let me make uh, that short. So I'm just going to pretend that we are having the clutch pedal now depressed, right? So that's what we're doing. There we go. Contact. Rock. And it works. So that's good. So this is how you can check things. And I, I'm going to check every circuit one by one just to make sure that everything works. Because if you check it at the last minute when everything is cabled up, it might become difficult. So the next thing we're going to connect is the fuse box and we actually have two greens and two browns and let's see. So the green one is certainly coming from our key switch which is actually power to fuse box. That's number one. There's a brown one which is actually coming from the battery. There's a second brown one which I don't know exactly where it's going but that's all right. And then there's a fourth one which I don't really know yet at this moment in time what it is. It seems to be composed of a couple of green ones and a blue and um, black one but we'll find out. I'm not too much worried about it right now. Okay so let's have a look on the fuse box and see where we're going to connect it. So here we have the fuse box and we need to decide uh, which side is going to be the input or the driver and which side is the output. So I'm going to consider everything on the bottom uh, which is going to be the in. All right and then the top is going to be the out. And now we also need to decide um, where we're going to connect things and we need to remember what is what. So here is that cable that you've seen on the circuit diagram. There's the big green one, which is the one coming from the contact switch. There's two brown ones, and there's the one with the multiple colors on. So I'm gonna start with the green one. And the green one is actually an input. So let me turn this around a bit and let me stick that on there. So this is power going into the fuse box, coming from the contact. And this is going to feed all my instruments and my gauges as soon as the contact is turned on. So um, that's one. Now on those two I don't know what is what and to figure out what is what we're just going to use a voltmeter and see where we have a connection of 12 volts and which, where we have no 12 volts on that on these cables. So let, let us check that out. So first of all I'm going to turn off the contact and I'm going to hold the probe on one side to the ground and then we measure the brown cables because I know brown is coming from the battery typically. Nothing on this one. Well, here we have 12 volts, so this is a feed as well. So I'm going to put that in on the second connector. So this is a plus 12 volts. All right. Okay, that's good. So now, uh, this other brown one, I don't know what that is, but we'll figure that out, where that is supposed to go. Now to figure out what this other brown cable is that we have on the loom going to the fuse box, uh, looking back on the diagram, so we were over here and we had a brown one. So we had actually two brown cables and one was plus 12 volts actually coming from the battery. The other one is going through the harness and I did find another brown one which is going to the main light switch and in fact that makes sense because I'm going to get power from the battery through the wiring loom to the big connector here uh, where the power comes in here it's going to run through it's going to go straight to the fuse box one of the brown ones remember we, we measured that and we always have 12 volts no matter if the contact is on or not and I suppose that the output of that one cable on the other side of the fuse box is then going to go back which is the second brown one back to the main light switch. As I said before I want to turn on the lights without the contact being turned on. So I am almost sure that's the one and the way to check it is with an ohmmeter. So let me place this to ohms or to the beep 
that is even better. This is the one that we don't know where it's going to. But if I look on the wiring loom and I follow it as we have seen on the diagram, this is probably the other end. And if you're not sure, just buzz it out. So let's stick it in there and see. And that's the one, so we are right.